Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to another UXW Bill video. I'm going to duck in underneath the cover of the hood here in hopes that it will buy me a little respite and your ears as well from the wind that is so terribly prevalent out here at the farm today. What we're looking at is performing a quick feasibility assessment, a system assessment to see whether or not we could get the air conditioning on this 1995 Kenworth semi or truck tractor to work again. And I just don't know. I think this system has been neglected and poorly maintained for a very long time. This compressor is certainly in a sorry way. There's the data plate on the compressor if anybody wants to read about it. I don't know if that's the original compressor or not. I guess I would be surprised. Here's our suction side service fitting. That looks lovely, doesn't it? Especially with this, um, no doubt, OEM factory, completely original cap on it. At least the high side's got the proper cap on it. But this, this idler pulley here, this does not turn at all smoothly. I mean, it will turn, but not smoothly. Of course, there's no belt on it. Probably a small wonder it's here. I, I don't know why people do this when an air conditioning system fails, but instead of just leaving it for maybe the next owner to decide that they'd like to fix, they end up cutting the hoses and stuff and removing the compressor and just pretty much dashing any hopes for a reasonable restoration of the system to service. But I believe that this compressor is just completely locked up at this point. And this system has just the tiniest little amount of positive pressure on it. I'll stick a key in here, and those of you who are listening with headphones may be able to hear this better. We'll wait for the traffic on the road out there to go past, and then we'll see if you can hear this or if the iPhone can even pick it up. Yeah, there's just the tiniest amount of positive pressure there, so I don't know what's going to happen. I may really have my work cut out for me with this one. We're going to start at the beginning with a nitrogen leak test. Okay, there's not even enough pressure left in this system to give even the slightest registration on my manifold gauge set. We've got our nitrogen over here. It's about time for a new bottle, but it'll get us through. It might be time for a new gauge on my regulator, too. We'll go ahead and we'll bring that up to a nice round number. Something like way, way, way too much sounds about right to me. And then we'll go ahead and we'll try to blow this system apart by putting some pressure on it and just seeing what happens. I hear a leak already. It's a leak of my own making. Tighten these hoses up. That might work a little bit better. I'll explain the Casey's mug in a minute. For right now, let's just see if we can get some positive pressure on the system. I know a lot of people would take that off, but guess what? I'm not one of them. Okay. I got a little bit of positive pressure on the system. Put a little bit more on there. seem to have attracted some attention here. I wonder if that's a little cucumber beetle. Last time I worked on an air conditioning system, well not the last time, but several times ago, that leaky dehumidifier, I believe there was one of those around, and it was postulated in the comments that it was going for its own EPA Section 608 card. Maybe that one is too, I don't know. Now that we've got a little bit of positive pressure on the system, I'll show you what this is for. It's been a minute or two since you've seen this. <laughs> I'll see if it still works. Uh-oh. What do you suppose that cord does? I bet you if you plug that in, it makes some guy's lights in China turn on or something. Never mind that. We've got bigger fish to fry at the moment. Does this old pump still have it? it does and the wind hasn't even blown my mug away just yet i was really looking forward to a merry old game of keep the mug in place while you're trying to fill it certainly try to keep it in frame wow that's 
It's lovely. Probably full of vitamins B, A, and D. Anyway, I happen to be a real wizard on at least a part-time basis, and so it is that I forgot my soapy bubbles. So we've actually got soap hung up in the fruit trees out here to try and keep some pest or another out of there. I don't remember exactly which one. That looks absolutely premium, doesn't it? I'm hoping to pop that in there. There it goes. That's the outcome I was expecting. All right, we'll set that up again. And we'll try it again. You don't need too much. I'll tell you what, it's the 4K that really makes this. Never mind the camera work, never mind the scripting, never mind the guy running the camera having any idea what's in frame or what isn't. Sounds like I got a critic over there. All right, there's our soap floating around. I'm gonna stir that up a little bit and just see if I can use this as some extremely dubious and questionable soapy bubbles. So we started out with about 60 pounds worth of pressure in the system. It's down to about 53 and a half on both sides. I'm fairly certain there is a major leak in this system somewhere. What I was going to do with the soapy bubble water, since I'm sure you wanted to know and are no doubt asking that question right now, and wow, that soap is doing a great job of dissolving in there. Probably has a lot to do with the fact that that water is harder than a brick. <laughs> anyway, my intention was to use that to see if these service fittings were leaking. And it's entirely possible that these two Schrader valves are in fact leaking. But something else is almost certainly leaking as well, because look how much pressure we've lost in just the 50-odd seconds that I've been talking to you so far. So, before we go any further with this, we'll make sure that's valved off, and we'll pop that off there and just see. We'll just take a little bit of our water here and try to splash it on there. I'm sure this is going to go well which is to say it's not going to work at all. These things certainly look a little oily, more than a little oily, I'd say. Now this next one, we'll pop this off here. That one really looks oily. And I would have told you, which just proves how much of a forward thinker I'm not, I would have told you that I was going to have to try to climb up here and avoid inadvertently starring in America's funniest semi-truck tractor related fatalities but I don't have to do that because I can send the scanning electron iPhone up there and we can all see for ourselves that maybe that service fitting's not leaking. Now some of you at this point are probably practically screaming at your monitor how are you going to avoid getting liquid in the system? How are you going to avoid contaminating it with that moisture? The answer is simplicity itself. We'll let the tool do the job. We're under positive pressure right now with dry nitrogen. So I can just go ahead and blow that water out of there and the few little droplets that are left really shouldn't be anything to worry about. So the next thing we're going to do is stick our good old service adapters on here again. And we'll keep driving the pressure up and we'll do some looking around, make a cursory examination of this thing to see if I can find, yeah, we've lost a lot of pressure See if I can find by sight or sound or any of those things just where the leak might be at. I think we'll take this up to about 100 PSI or so and then we'll start wandering around. We'll also make some checks with the soapy bubbles, although that's definitely a subpar situation. No soapy bubbles needed for this one. Can you hear that? Bring the pressure up a little bit. The back of the compressor is actually leaking. This plate right here. You can even see if the thing will focus. We'll tell it to focus there. You can see that there's oil coming out of there. I can actually feel that with my fingers. So this compressor is just completely hosed. What about the rest of the system? 
I don't think we'll know for sure until we manage to get that fixed. Come on, focus. Oh. But let's go ahead and take a little look around anyway. Here's the other side of the system on the passenger side of the truck. This is not only the heater box, it's also the location of the evaporator coil. Made by good old Bergstrom. If you've ever paid attention to the climate control systems on a school bus, as I have, you'll undoubtedly be familiar with that name, at least in the United States, and I think they're still very much in business. Right there, we have a cleverly disguised thermostatic expansion valve. Probably ample opportunities for leakage there. So we'll just try to get some liquid on these various fittings, which really isn't working very well at all. Being prepared to do a job is just way overrated. Yeah, there's lots of stuff that I'd like to spray. precision engine parts in here that are designed to get completely soaked in that fashion. I don't see anything bubbling there. There's lots of places this thing could leak. I'm sure it's got an air conditioning system for the occupant of the sleeper as well. Let's go inside and see if maybe we can hear anything in there. And we push that down, right? Yes, we reach up there and we push it down. Now and we, we shut the door, door, and the lock pops open. <laughs> so is that by design? Was that intentional? That is our question to you in the YouTube viewing audience. Shutting again, popping up again. But if you use the key, and if the key operator can put the key in the hole, you just lock the door, just like that. So 1995 Kenworth, if anybody's wondering. I think you probably heard my father say that, though. The old horse has got a few miles on her, doesn't she? I'd also like to draw your attention to this down here. I believe that is referred to as a ringer, an impersonator in our midst. Because, yeah, definitely not a Mack truck. There's our air conditioning controls. Got our various dash vents up here. Oh, there have been tons of mice in this truck. Mice have been a real problem, as they are with anything on the farm. I think we've even had a rat in here. But I'm going to try to get down here near this heater box. This is the other side of what we were just looking at under hood on the passenger side of the truck. Let's see if I can hear anything, but I'm not hearing anything. If we could hear anything if we open this up there might be something disgusting in there so consider yourself forewarned but i'm not hearing anything here in the cab of the old truck so i think that compressor might well be the biggest problem that we have here and that we're going to have to get that fixed up first before we can actually determine anything else. So at this particular juncture, folks, that's where the video ends. As always, I wanna thank you for watching. If you have a constructive comment, I would certainly love to hear it. And until next time, this has been another UXW Bill video. Oh, I almost forgot to put our super duper factory original no holds barred diamond platinum series service port cover back on.